Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout share. Today I'm going to show you 12 layouts, so that's six double page spreads that I have cut from just six pattern papers. Now the six pattern papers that I have chosen here are from the current March April catalogue and I've just checked online and unfortunately this paper collection has sold out but that means a lot of you will already have it. So I'm going to flip through what I've created here. Now you can see both sides of the patterns here but it still just has six 12 by 12 sheets so this is one two three four five six sheets of pattern paper pretty much any pattern paper will work with this there are still a couple of mixing collections that are available to order through my website that I think will work very well and I have kept this to a formula this is a five by five mixing but not all cuts are five by five inch squares some of these are and I'm going to flip through these but I also want to show you the stamp set I've used and I'm going to show you a couple of little coloring tips so you can see here this image of the globe here has been colored in and I have a very quick and easy way to show you how to color this in. I'm going to bring in the stamp sets that I've used and they are all from this March April catalog and I wanted to use the stamp sets that I bought from this catalog to dress up these pages. Now these are very clean graphic simple type pages. If you wanted to add some stenciling on here you could. If you want to make these into Christmas pages with the Christmas collection and add more stickers in you could. If you wanted to trim down the white and put another cardstock color behind it you could do that as well. I have left these fairly clean so that they are open to interpretation and they also act like a sketch. And I will link to my 4x4 mixing video so you can see how I set up my guides. I do a little flip through of my guide in that video so you can check it out if you don't already know how I set these up. And the guides are available to purchase. There is a link in the description below that you can click on. If you are currently a VIP with me and you make any purchase within the month of March or April, you will get this cutting guide for free. But if you just want to purchase the scrapbook guide, check out the PayPal link below. Now these are the stamp sets that I ordered and I had to change things up a little bit with the current situation with Close to My Heart and some things aren't in stock, some things are coming back. But I did use all of these stamp sets throughout this. You don't have to have these stamp sets. You can put any title you like here. You can die cut a title, you can do different stamped images, but I wanted to show off what I bought in March and April. So I'm going to flip through these as I talk to the pages here. You can see that I've got almost a chevron type look or an arrow type look pointing in towards photos for this layout. You could rotate this and have the arrows pointing in towards each other and have them symmetrical if you wanted to. But I wanted to offset them just a little bit for a little bit of fun. If you wanted to, you can put your arrows so that they're coming up the page as well and have a photo here and your title running down this way. So for this one, it's quite flexible with what you can do for it. Now the stamp set that I've used is this Let's Go Anywhere scrapbooking. If I turn this over you can see this is the actual size of the stamps here. They're a little bit reduced in size on the front but because currently this is not available with Thin Cuts I have done all my stamping direct to page to show you that you don't have to have the Thin Cuts to create a cool scrapbook layout. I haven't used all of the images on here but I really love this title and I just stamped this on here with a block. Now if you have a stamping platform that will take a 12 by 12 inch scrapbook layout you might have more success with getting a deep black image here. When I stamped this it wasn't exactly perfect so I got out my Spectrum Noir black marker and all I did was go through and just touch up the areas that weren't quite black enough. And no one's going to be able to tell once this is under a memory protector. And I'm really happy with the end result for this. This stamp set here, I've talked about this one before. This stamp image with the aeroplane and the dotted lines and the let's go anywhere. It's one of my favorites. And I've overlapped it here on the globe. And I am going to show you how I color that in at the end of this video. And I have stamped across a couple of layers of cardstock here. The trick with doing something like this is to make sure that your stamp is inked up perfectly. And have a sponge layer behind when you're doing your stamping and let the ink sit there for a while. You don't want to put too firm a pressure to smoosh out these fine little lines here but you want enough so that it will go across the layers of the paper and if it doesn't quite make it all the way across you can get a fine le pen. This is just a black le pen, the fine one, and you can touch it up a little bit with this marker. I love the Adventure Awaits. You can see I haven't quite stamped that perfectly straight but that's okay. And throughout this I've used the Honey Bunny Dots. Now while this doesn't have periwinkle it's more 
more a glacier color. I think it still works quite well with these fresh tones. So let's move on to layout two. And this one here is a fairly standard grid style pattern, but I've dressed it up with stamping over the top of some pattern paper here. So this is where this captured happiness comes in with the family time, everyday happiness. I love these little words here that are in a typewriter style font. And then I've also brought in the garden park borders. And what I've done for this is just stamped it directly onto my pattern piece of paper. Now I had constructed these before I did the stamping. Normally when I'm designing a scrapbook guide and a cutting guide, I do all the cutting first and then I dress my pages up later. So all I needed to do with this is get a couple of post-it notes and just lay them out on each side of this square here and then I could stamp over top without fear of getting any of the black image off into the white areas. And I did exactly the same on this side as well. I pretty much bought this garden part borders for this image here. I do love it and it comes out again in another layout later on. I have mixed these between travel, family time, and there's an Easter layout as well to show you. I also love this one here with the little plant pots, but I haven't actually used this one. And this little sentiment here, you mean the world to me, comes from the Let's Go Anywhere card making. And this is another one that has these gorgeous dotted line elements and it's mainly based on travel and and card making, but it works really well on scrapbook layouts as well. So having this underneath this photo title here, will highlight how special this photo is. And the hearts here that you can see that I have layered over top of one another are these little dotted hearts here. And I've used the tiny little solid heart as well, just to add a little bit of detail around some of these areas and onto this journal box. You can see I've brought in the sun zip strip here. I love the zip strips with the mix-ins. I find them very usable, especially when I'm doing clean and classic layouts like this. So we'll move on to layout three. And this is another square type pattern, but the layers come in like this to draw your eye in towards the center of the layout. I did consider flipping these around so that it would come across the page like this. And this works really well too. You can definitely lay it out like this, but I use this gorgeous bunny rabbit stamp here, and that's from Spring Bunnies. And I've done exactly the same coloring on the bunnies and also on these floral elements. And the floral elements are from Garden Eggs. And I've just used these two little florals here. I did stamp some of the eggs, but I just found that they were a little bit large and I probably needed to stamp them with the colors that are on this layout. But I just found that they were a little bit too big for the layout here with the smaller titles and these smaller little floral elements that I've put on here. So the happy that comes from this Garden Eggs set and these other word art pieces, they come from this captured happiness. And then I've combined Easter from this garden eggs with happiness in this typewriter font from captured happiness. And these are all stamped in espresso ink just to give it a little bit more softness, but I have still got black mats on here and I've used the Le Pen to do all the black markings around all of the pattern pieces, which you've already seen in the first two layouts that I've shared with you. I love how all of this comes together with these little word art type scrapbooking elements. You can use these on cards as well. It doesn't have to be specifically on a scrapbooking layout, but it does bring everything together and they fit into the little nooks and crannies that are created with this style of layout. And there's another one of the zip strips here that I've trimmed down to fit. I haven't gone all the way to the edge here. I've purposefully left a gap so that they line up with the edges of this four by three photo. So layout number four, is a lot of banners. Now to stretch the banners, I have cut these. So these pieces do not go all the way through underneath the photos here. And this is another travel type theme. And I've used elements from the Let's Go Anywhere card making workshop kit. So that comes with an exclusive stamp set and this is where the arrows come from and also this Let's Explore Together. They've been stamped in black and I haven't got black paper behind these pieces. I've actually stamped these onto a half inch strip and the reason why I did that is because I actually messed up my stamping underneath here. So I covered that up with the half inch strips of this and then I got my black Le Pen and I just drew along the edges of this just to finish these off to give them that additional little detail. 
detail. You can see I've got this aeroplane here with a heart. It's a little bit different from the one in the Let's Go Anywhere scrapbooking set. It has the aeroplane going around in a circle. And I've also stamped on some other little swirly pieces here from this card making workshop kit. There's the little loop here. I've stamped one way, rotated the block, stamped the other way. And then I have finished those off with these little arrow pieces here and put those onto the ends. It's quite easy to line everything up with the photopolymer stamps and our clear blocks. It makes everything very, very easy. And I have put some more of those dots around just to add a little bit of interest to some of these swirl elements here. But I do love how it joins up these banner pieces and creates a little bit of visual interest onto the pattern paper. So let's move on to a layout five. And this is another family or home type page. I've used some different images from the Captured Happiness stamp set and they are around this area here. And you might be able to see I've actually stamped the little bird houses onto some pattern paper. So I've got some here that I haven't used. I'll just bring them up a little bit closer so that you can have a look. I have just stamped them. I had one two by 12 inch piece of pattern paper left over after I'd done all the cutting. So basically all that was left is this piece that was a two by 12 inch strip. But I decided I would stamp some of the little bird houses on there. And I've used the same coloring technique that I used on the bunny, the florals, and the globe that I'm going to show you in just a minute just to add a little bit more interest to these and I fussy cut them out and yes you can see I fussy cut out the little bird that is in this strip here is not too hard to do and I think it looks quite sweet just flying off into the bird houses here on this side and sitting on top of this stamp stripe. Now this stripe is actually in the Captured Happiness set so it's not all words it's got one decorative stripe element here and I think that looks really good just leading off the edges of these subtitle type pieces. And then these are some zip strips as well but they're actually two zip strips that I have cut in half half lengthways just to stretch them out. This zip strip looks exactly the same as this piece of pattern paper but by cutting it into quarter inch strips I was able to put one across the top of here and then I've got about a 10 inch piece underneath here. I didn't put it all the way across. I think that adds just a nice bit of visual interest and breaks up the solid lines a little bit because the bottom part is quite paper heavy here with all the different patterns but putting the black lines around each piece separates them rather than them all just blending into one. So the sixth and final layout is another triangle design. I am loving creating triangle designs with these type of scrapbook guides that I'm creating. And this is created just from three squares and I've put them around the edges here to frame the photos. But even though we've got all the pattern papers around here that could be fairly busy because this is a mix in with fairly subtle tone on tone colors here, it just brings the eye into these photos here. This is another one of the zip strips that I have just trimmed down to fit at the top and the bottom to anchor these photos here. And you can see this is that stripe again. So I've used that coming off the edge. And with my stamping, I've used This Is The Best Life and the Love This. And what I've done with the stamping is I've just highlighted two of the words here, best and this. I stamped them in second generation sage green several times with the stripe and then I reversed the stamp so I had the solid side to ink up. I masked this off and then I stamped with the solid part over top of the multiple stamping that I'd done. So that means I get a little bit of texture here with the stripe, but then I've filled that in with the reverse side of the stamp to give a solid line. Now for this one, instead of using the honey bunny dots, which have the glacier color, I got out my blue dots because they have a periwinkle color. Just to finish that off, because what I found is the glacier dots really didn't quite match because there's a lot of periwinkle in this and there's no yellow to break it up. So just being blues and greens, I felt like I had to match the dots into the actual pattern paper. So that's the 12 layouts or six double page spreads. Now I'm going to show you how I did the easy colouring in. I'm just going to bring this page back in here and I'll put these on top so you can have a look at those while I'm doing the globe. I've got one I've prepared earlier and I'm just going to use Glacier and Sage ink. Now I have these mini blending tools. There are lots of different ones out on the market. I just got these from Amazon and I'll put a link to those below, but there's a big variety of these. I just bought a big pack of these so that I could have ones for different colors and they came in three different sizes. So this is the largest, the medium, and then I have 
have a small one as well. And I'm going to use the small ones for this coloring. But if you wanted to color this, you could use pencils, tri-blend markers, anything that you like really. It doesn't have to be with these mini blending tools. You can use your larger blending brushes if you wanted to. You could stamp the image onto a post-it note, mask off the land while you're doing the ocean sort of area. So I've tapped off and then I'm coming in with my brush just to add a little bit of blue. Now I'm not being totally specific. I'm going over some of the areas of land here and that's okay. I don't want this to be absolutely perfect, but I'm tapping off each time so that I don't get, if I didn't tap off, I could get a harsh pounce line. And I'll just go around this side with a bit more blue. And then up here, there's a little bit of sea or ocean. So I'm just coloring that whole area in blue just to give that a little bit of blue in that area there and around these islands that are here. It's a bit of a shame this one doesn't have Australia on it for me, but I really love this globe image. I think it's one of my favorite globe images that we've ever had. So, and that's how I did it with the glacier. And then I do exactly the same thing with the sage. Tap off a little bit and then come in. And it really doesn't matter if you get some areas that are darker than others because that's how a globe looks. It's usually got darker images and lighter images and that represents mountains and flatter lands. And the same with the ocean, it usually has some darker and lighter images. But this is a really quick way of colouring in. It takes all the stress out of staying in the lines. And you can see I didn't tap off then and I've got a little bit of a blob. So what I can try and do is just spread that out a little bit, but I don't want to make it too dark. Or I can just embrace it and make it like a little mountain range and add a little bit more darker area onto there. So you can, if you want to, spend a little bit more time, build up some layers of colour and just keep going until you're happy with the look of it. Now for the stand, I'm going to bring in Mink Ink and I've got another little blending brush. And what I want to do is build up some colour to give this a little bit of a 3D look. So you can see I'm adding more colour here. I'm going back in, picking up more. I'm not fussing about whether or not I go outside the lines. I want to add more at the base here. And then I'm going to tap off and just fill in the rest of these areas. It's just adding some partial color to this just to give it a little bit more visual interest. If you didn't want to do this, it looks perfectly fine just stamped and left in black and white. And these have a bit of an angle to them so I can get a little bit of a finer area if I wanted to by not pushing down quite so hard. So that is the end result with the coloring for this. And it worked really well doing it on the pattern paper. I did test this out with my leftover two inch by 12 inch strip and I quite liked how the colors came in. I have got ballerina in there for the little heart. And I'll just close this up, but I wanna bring in the bunnies and the florals so you can have a little closer look to that. On these, I've used the same technique, but I actually used a brush that was a little bit bigger. And I've got three espresso bunnies and two mink ones and then I've brought in ballerina for the ears and I've actually added a little bit of ballerina so I've just inked up the ballerina and just done a little pounce where the cheeks are just to give them some little rosy cheeks and this was small enough for me to just add some ink on here and because this is white daisy and these are just water dye based inks they don't blend as well as what they would on a different cardstock white daisy is very thirsty so as soon as you start putting ink on there it tends to trap it where it is and it's a little bit harder to build up some color but i quite like the soft look of these and how they came out and you can see with the flowers i've used honey butter there and a little dab of espresso just to add some colors and some sage for the leaves. So I really love playing with this coloring in technique. And I also wanted to mention, if you want some coloring ideas 
and other layout ideas and techniques. The creative design team girls always love sharing techniques. Our CDT Creatives membership group in Facebook is currently open for registration. We only open it a couple of times a year, but we've had a lot of requests asking us what we're doing with the closure of Close to My Heart. We are continuing on. We want to bring more techniques to you. And these are the sort of techniques that we like to delve into on our creative classes that we have once a week. We have tip videos videos and we have challenges and we've got a lovely community there and share what they do as well with their creations. So we'd love to have you there if you've been wanting to come and check us out. I will leave the registration link below and it's open for registration until the 25th of March and then we'll be closing the doors again for a while. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at what I've created with just six sheets of pattern paper. Yes, these are the mix-ins. I'm thinking a lot of you will have already bought them because they were always a very popular product with Close to My Heart. I know for me, before I even opened a new catalogue, mix-ins would always be at the top of my list to order. I do love the tone-on-tone -tone looks to these and the smaller, more generic prints that they have. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.